And once again, welcome back to Flight Sim and other stuff. And I'm just blown away by something, and I was so impressed by this, I had to do a quick video to show you what I think is one of the most exciting... <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? But one of the most exciting additions to Microsoft Flight Sim that I've seen for ages. Now, as you know, I use Stream Deck, fantastic interface for controlling controlling the flight simulator and the computer and everything else. Uh, they're not cheap though, they're not cheap. And my aim when flying is to get away from using the mouse and keyboard. Uh, and a lot of the time I'm in VR, but we'll talk about that in a second. So I don't want to use a mouse and keyboard. I want some hardware controllers. And I used to have a home cockpit. But those are expensive. They take up lots of space. And yeah, I mean, they're expensive. And there's a lot of work involved. So a while back, I found this device. And I've done some videos. And I've spoken about this on the channel before. Here we are. It is the Behringer X-Touch Mini. It's a MIDI controller and it has a bunch of rotaries along here and some push buttons. And using Access and O's, I control the hardware with this. And it's brilliant. It, it, it is. And these are, what, £35, something like that. This is an amazing product. Uh, a lot cheaper than, say, the Satec flight panels, which I used to use. Um, and far more flexible because I can do so much with this. There are some limitations though. Um, in VR, for example, you need to have good muscle memory to recognize where these are, which button is which. So I printed out, and you may have seen some of these before, these replacement knobs that look like Airbus controllers. And I replaced the rotaries on there. Just pulled this off. Put one of these on. Um, and that, at least when I've got my headset on, I can feel the type of button. But it's not perfect, because i still got to remember what each of those buttons are. And I can shift this. So each of these rotaries, and they do have push buttons as well, each of these rotaries has two functions, whether I'm on layer A or layer B. Now, if I'm flying in 2D, which I still do very occasionally, a lot of the time what I'll do if I'm flying a heavy, something like the Phoenix, um, I will do the setup in 2D and then once I get to push back, that's when I put my headset on. So I bought some of these. Just cardboard templates and then I printed out, I can't, I don't know if you can see that. But you print out on there and you stick that over the bay ringer and you can see what's happening. And it sort of works, um, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect. And there are only two layers, and of course uh, that limits the number of buttons you could put on there. You could buy more than one of these and use multiple ones of those. £35, you know, they're cheaper than the Stream Deck. What I found, <laughs> uh, this is... This is a game changer. It's a game changer for me, and I think it might be a game changer for a lot of people that watch this channel. So I'm actually going to do a series on how to set this up, but I just wanted to show you what's happening. So let's jump down to the Flight Sim computer and show you. So here I am in a Cessna. Obviously, it's a Cessna, and I'm not sure. But that, that, that doesn't matter. Um, and let's power the head to the wall. Uh, my mouse going all over the place because yeah let's uh, right let's power it and get rid of that put some power on it and then if I start twisting the knobs on the X touch as you see at the moment I'm changing the barometer so we can see that the altitude gauge is changing and then I can tune the radios with one of these buttons. There we go, that's the tenths, that's the major ones. And if I push it, we swap the frequencies. But I still have to remember, wouldn't it be great if I could see what's happening? <laughs> this is what this does. I, I mean, this is brilliant. So we now have this add-on panel. 
And when I click that, ah, see, there it is. There is my FIP. And guess what? Because this is an in-game panel, this works in VR. And I can see, if I can turn any of these knobs, you see it lights up. So I can see what's happening. And in fact, when I'm in VR, what you do, if, you, if I was to press a button, that deep orange is to let you know which button you've pressed. It doesn't actually trigger it until I press it a second time. <laughs> if I'm in 2D and I know exactly what button I've pressed, then it doesn't matter. And I'm not limited to two layers. As you can see on this screen at the moment, I'm on page two. Now I'm on page one. Page two. Page three. I can have as many pages as I want. And it's labelled. I. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. You can get it now on flightsim.to. Let's go there and find it for you. So you can see what it looks like. Um, uh, what are we going to do? Um, uh, X Touch. Search for X Touch. Enter. Um, X Touch. Bearing uh, X Touch template. Mini gauge use for axis and O's. There it is from Funatic. Close. There it is. You download it. It is. Oh, how can I put this? It might seem a little bit daunting because there's some scripting you have to put behind it to make it work with an access and O's. And if you've never done any scripting, it may seem a little bit daunting. So that's why I'm going to do a series on it because I promise you it isn't. You can cut and paste. And I'll, I'll load up some of the work I've done. So I'm working on this Cessna at the moment. And I'm going to have all of these. So as you can see, I've already done my first page is the G530. So this one here and all the analog gauges. But you can see I've got the direct to the menu button. All of those are on there. Uh, the next page will be the 430. And then I'll do the... ADF and the autopilot and the transponder. I'll put those on there and you can just flick between them by pressing those up and down buttons. Flick through the profiles. I can see which one it is. It's like, it's very much like a stream deck and I can see what it is when I'm in VR or even when I'm in 2D. Of course, you don't have to use a FIP like this, uh, a, a web extension. You can just do it if I go into access and O's, show you this one very quickly. Um, I'm going to switch off gauges. I'm going to switch off the web FIP and enable a desktop FIP. And now I can close that. And now it's not in a window, but if I've got a second screen, I can move that onto a second screen. I can. <laughs> this this guy is brilliant, and it just goes to show how powerful access and o's is and when you combine it with something like the bay ringer well it, i don't have to use the mouse anymore i can get prompts of what i'm doing you're gonna love it you're gonna love it so watch out i'm gonna start recording the series on that soon uh, i'll be back on sunday uh usual time 10 o'clock uh gmt not gmt 10 o'clock british summer time to do the Q&A's uh, but I just this is amazing I love this I think it's brilliant um, I've had a conversation with the guy that uh, the guy that developed this and yeah I think this is this is big this is big and for all of those on a budget that want to do hardware and get away from the mouse and keyboard Go out, get yourself a Bay Ringer X Touch Mini, follow the series, and let's have some fun flying. See you Sunday. Until we do see one another again, as usual, enjoy your flying, take care, stay safe, and a very goodbye to you. Bye.